the next step is to actually write a section. I've suggested here that you write up the top three ideas. Depending on the section, it might be three ideas, it might be four ideas, it might be two ideas. It depends how verbose you end up being or how many ideas you come up with for each section. The idea is you want to look at the number of marks that are available and the number of words you have and discuss relatively fully the major important ideas that, that need to be fit into there. Um, so write up your top three ideas. Write fully with inline reference citations. You can see here on the right hand side that I've got a sample of writing something fully with an inline reference citation. According to Simpkins 2008a page 10 to 12, the yellow brick road runs past Michelle's house making a detour around Nick's rose bushes. The result of this is a blooming mess of chaos. You want to remember also to add the full reference list at the end of stuff that you've used. You may find it easier if you include a temporary citation instead of a, a proper inline citation as I've done here. A full citation would include the name of the block, for example, the block and the part number um, so that you can compile a list then that you would number later A, B, C, etc. But for counting words it's easier if you use the smaller citation thing because these citations here also count in your word limit, unfortunately. When you're writing your section and you discover that you're being very verbose, have a look and see if you can use some diagrams to illustrate your ideas. There's a lot of potential for diagrams in this report. We're talking about web services, we're talking about how they're built, we're talking about tiered architectures, we're talking about all kinds of things which are very agreeable to being illustrated. I have a sample one here on the right hand side which shows the different parts of a web service and the protocols and stuff that they're built on. You might want to do something similar. Please don't use mine though, <laughs> thanks. Um, another idea is to use tables to itemize pros and cons or other list-like structures. Tables do count, but you can be more concise in a table. Remember, however, that things that appear in tables and diagrams still have to somehow fit into your report. You can't just plop them into your report and hope that the person who's reading it draws whatever needs to be drawn from it. They do need to be integrated and referred to somehow, and they have to be relatively self-explanatory or you need to include some explanatory text. Again, you may need to do some research to find references to support your ideas. This idea about supporting your ideas has come up in block one, it's come up in block two. It's an important part of writing academically. We build on the work of others and we know that you didn't get all these ideas on your own. We know that you've drawn them from somewhere so you need to include a reference to where you've got them from. Some things might require you, as I said earlier, to go out on the internet or to look at additional resources to find ideas or further explanations which support the things that you're trying to claim. Places to look include, uh, or places to, to have references include for standards, for tools, things you've referenced or used out of the block, you know, you learned about what the different protocols were, or what's in the web services stack. That's all stuff out of the block materials and should be referenced. Journal articles or magazine articles that you've read. The video for block three which talks about web services. Um, opinion pieces on web services and how they're built or which way they should be built or um, what kind of percentage of people are using one type versus another type that you might find on the internet. Those are all ideas about places you might find material that you can reference or you should be referencing. As you write stuff, mark it off on your outline so that you can see clearly what you've already included in your report. And when you come to the end, you can see then what easily what you might have missed and still need to fit in there somehow. At this point, you might discover you need to rearrange your outline because you've covered something in one section that you said in your outline you were going to cover in another one. So rearrange your outline if necessary. Tick off items that you've already done. Now, it's likely that you'll discover your section is too long. It'll be more than the 152 words or 287 or 387 or whatever it is for that section because I told you to write fully to begin with. 
So what you need to do at this point is count the number of words in the section and rewrite to save words. Now, I'm suggesting first rewriting to save words. I'm not suggesting cutting stuff out. So keep all of the ideas you have at the moment and see if you can rewrite it to eliminate the excess number of words. So here again is my sample. According to Simpkins 2008A, page 10 to 12, the yellow brick road runs past Michelle's house, making a detour around Nick's rose bushes. The result of this is a bloomy mess of chaos. This can be rewritten. It currently has 32 words. I can rewrite it to have only 24. The yellow brick road runs past Michelle's house, Simpkins 2008A, page 10 to 12, detouring around Nick's rose bushes, resulting in a blooming chaotic mess. The one on the right hand side still encompasses the same ideas as on the left hand side, but it's only 24 words to the original 32, so I've managed to save 8 words. You know, 8 words isn't necessarily a lot, but I mean it's 8 words that you can then use for something else. So ruthlessly edit, rewrite what you have, try and conglomerate it all together, keep the essentials, but see if you can break it down so that it doesn't take up as many words. Again, consider making a diagram or two or three. I cannot emphasize enough how important diagrams probably will be in this report. Consider using tables and lists. But remember, don't be so concise that the marker has to read your mind. Markers don't assume things. If it's not actually written there, they're not going to assume that you know it. So you, you have to show it in order to get credit for it. So once you've done this ruthlessly editing part of going through and rewriting things, you may still find that what you have is too long, at which point you need to consider how many ideas that you're encompassing in that section. It could be that you're trying to include more than is necessary. I'd suggest going back then and cutting out the least important idea that you've covered. Um, and Because the idea, of course, is to ensure that you have enough coverage of main points that you're likely to get the majority of points in that section. If the section is only worth 10 points, you know, there's, it's probably the case that you're only supposed to have two points or two major areas. If it's worth 15 points, you probably were supposed to have, you know, three areas or something like that. So see what you can do with that. You're likely going to find as you do this course and other courses that you need some kind of bibliography management tool. Um, there are a number of choices available at varying prices. EndNote is probably the industry standard and has been used in academic research and other places for years and years and years. Unfortunately, it is quite expensive, but it is dual platform. There is an educational price available of about 160 pounds. Given the time you have between now and when it's due, you probably don't have time to, to get that, though, because you can't just download it and start using it. Other choices are Zotero, which is browser-based. It works in Firefox browsers. Uh, so it'll work on the Mac, it'll work on the PC. It allows you to collect, annotate, um, insert into Word documents, etc., the whole nine yards. It's open source, it's free. Have a look at that. I know that the Block 1 author, for example, used that tool for generating his bibliography list for Block 1. If you're on a Mac, another choice, more reasonably priced and available for immediate download, is Bookends from Sunny Software. That's available for about $70 US. It integrates with Word, it integrates with Melil, and it integrates with Pages. The idea behind bibliography tools is that they allow you to, for example, generate temporary citations in line, and then the, the software will go through, scan your document, look for the temporary citations, replace them with a correctly formatted inline citation, like, NIMP, uh, like Simpkins 2008A, page 10 to 12, and then we'll generate a complete list of references that have been used in the document at the end. And that's, for example, what I would use to, to do all of my writing. Very invaluable, saves you a ton of time, especially if you have a lot of references inside your document. It can be very tedious to keep track of them by hand. you're probably going to need some diagramming tools. Word does have some built-in graphics tools, but they're pretty poor. Uh, one suggestion is to download OpenOffice. It has a, a graphics drawing program as part of its suite. That's available free. That's an open source product. 
If you're on a Mac, OmniGraffle is what I use to make my diagrams normally. It's available for about $60 US at educational prices, and it's available immediately online, though you may have to provide proof of educational status. Concept Draw is another industry standard kind of drawing package for the Mac and the PC. It's available for about $100 US at an academic price. Again, you might not have time to, to get that because you do have to provide proof of purchase, but it might be useful to look at for future reference. Another possibility, which I haven't used, is Inkscape, which is another open source program. runs on the Mac and PC, and it's sort of like Illustrator, so it's a vector-based drawing program. This is the end of the TMA3 report briefing, at least the, the main part. This has been an IM presentation. Feel free to use this presentation or present it to other people, but don't make any derivative works and please don't sell it because it's under a Creative Commons Attributions Non-Commercial No Derivative Works license.